Hi everybody, welcome to TFT, Tarot for Today, Divine Dabblings with Oberon and Banshee. This is me, Oberon, with my outlook on the emotional exchanges. It's a Friday morning reading, good for the week, and that week is, of course, Friday, October 25th, till next Thursday, Halloween. So also, happy Halloween, everyone. So my usual reading, I use the Modern Love Tarot by Ethany. It's very modern. It sort of covers love in all of its forms. And I do a reading for each sign of the zodiac starting with Aries and working all the way through to Pisces. And I'd like to keep in mind that I temper this reading to be for the sun, moon, and rising. So if you have Taurus as your moon sign, then you want to pay attention to the Taurus reading because it may relate to some degree. To you. At any rate, here we go. So we're going to start with Aries. And I pulled two cards. The first one from the top of the deck. The second from the bottom of the deck. That first card is the emotional challenge or opportunity coming. And then the bottom card is the action required. So let's start once again with Aries. Aries. What is the opportunity or challenge? It's the Ace of Wands. It's upright. The opportunity or the challenge is maybe there is a new friendship of some sort, a new relationship in general, strong bond of friendship that is beginning. Maybe there's an overture of a partnership of some sort to you. It could be business related because it is Wands. But we're doing the emotional exchanges here. So even if it is, it may present the idea of something that affects the emotions one way or the other too. And so this could be saying this is an office romance or this is a romance or beginning closer relationship based on proximity. So maybe you're in the same class together at school or something of that sort. So what is the opportunity or card? By the way, it, it, the prognosis looks good. I mean, it looks like something that could really develop a, a strong relationship beginning. What is the action required? And it's the Seven of Pentacles. And it's upright. And it's, it's too tempting to say, plant that seed. <laughs> but it is saying that this is perhaps to some degree... A situation that you will have to give it time to grow. You will have to give it time to be nurtured in certain ways. The Seven of Pentacles energy sort of says, let's watch this. Let's, let's not take action right now. Let's let it do its own thing. There's always that idea there that if you let it do its own thing too long, you might miss a, another opportunity or something might not otherwise work out. But we're not going to go there at the moment. So that's for Aries then. Something beginning, but maybe you should let it work its own way. In other words, no matter how strong or charismatic or right it feels, you still might want to let the other person show their true intentions 
All right, so that was Aries, Sun, Moon, Arising. Now we are going to Taurus, Sun, Moon, Arising. Opportunity or challenge. And it is the reversed Page of Wands. Taurus, the challenge seems to be you're not getting a certain message. Somebody may be trying to tell you the news, but you either are incapable of understanding it or you're sort of avoiding taking that into yourself. And so this may be about an emotional matter. This may be about the status quo of a relationship, perhaps, that you've taken you know, for granted or taken advantage of. And maybe this news or information won't be to your liking. So what is the action required? And it's the upright eight of wands. So Taurus, I think you have to move quickly. And you know, in the figure, somebody is guiding you or you're guiding somebody, taking them by the hand. And you're moving forward. There's a burst of energy there. And I think this is saying really that old, Adage, you know, should or get off the pot, you know, that this is saying if there's some aspect or some friendship or relationship that has sort of been stalled or delayed, you, you have to move quickly towards engagement or else, you know, it's not going to work out. So that's what I have for choruses. Moving right along to Gemini. Sun, moon, or rising. Okay, Gemini, what is that opportunity or challenge? And it's death, change. This could be personal change. This could be about you really making a real decision to majorly change something in your life. On one level, this could be really finding a new diet or new health or focus routine in that direction. But this could also include going back to school or taking up a particular skill or hobby that has a certain level of involvement. But change comes in other ways. And if it's talking about a relationship, then this could be literal. And this could be saying you might have to accept and change in terms of a relationship that is now over or is no longer proximate in your life. And that maybe that's the challenge is, is moving on to a new life of some sort. So what is the action required? And it's the reversed seven of wands. So that's a little odd. The action required says maybe you have to accept that there was a defeat of some sort with this. And so that if this was a relationship that had a lot at stake, maybe it was, you know, a marriage and the dissolution of the marriage means one person bears a heavier economic burden or receives less or something. I don't understand divorce these days, but this could be saying... An acceptance of whatever that change, that status quo is, and that maybe to some degree you have to pull back in other ways. That this isn't really a moment of liberation, Gemini. That maybe this is a moment where the results of this change are moving you into a different direction you didn't expect. And maybe not the best of directions. 
And that's what I have for you, Gemini. So now, Cancer, Sun, Moon, or Rising. challenge or opportunity. For Cancer, it is the Queen of Wands. Maybe a part of you is really a flutter about some excitement. It could be yourself. You're turning into an exciting personality. The Queen of Wands is very alluring and very confident and brave and kind of pushing forward in a way, this queen may not necessarily feel unempowered and waiting on anyone around them. This queen may really sort of go there themselves. So it's a, it's a bit more aggressive. Um, is that what it is for you, Cancer, that you have this chance to sort of move from a mellower, you know, kind of homey, you know, way of looking at things to something maybe a little bit more. It's almost like maybe you're moving into a dynamic situation with or without a partner, but something that really sort of provokes you in a personal way to be a little bit more assertive. I'm not sure if this pertains to relationship, but it could. I, I don't exactly feel that. So what action is required? And it's the Ace of Swords. It's kind of like go out and do it. Go out and pick up the sword, wield the sword, Cancer. And, you know... Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising, I hate to characterize Cancer as just sort of like somebody who stands in the shadow of somebody or something else. But a lot of times Cancer gets that rep that they're more of the nurturing, softer kind of qualities in a person. And this is sort of saying at this time period, whatever has happened or whatever inspires you, to go out and be a little bit more assertive in conquering, and that maybe this is saying you you have met somebody or you're involved with somebody who really drives you in a way, who really forces you to excel. There's nothing wrong with that either. All right, Cancer, so now we're going to move on to Leo. Leo's the fifth sign of the Zodiac. And that's Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Leo, what is the challenge or opportunity? It's a challenge, maybe. It's the reverse Knight of Pentacles. The challenge may be that a relationship or a situation that has strong emotional appeal for you or something you really want emotionally, whether it's another person or, or thing, is really going slowly. There's no progress with this. And so you may feel challenged that either this is a fault of yourself, that you're not able to rise to this kind of challenge. You may feel that maybe it's that other person or situation is sort of really moving in a slow-mo way and doesn't even understand necessarily that there's an interest point coming from you. So 
What is the action required? Zounds. It's the Eight of Swords. It's upright. So the action required is probably realizing that this situation has some illusion about it, some glamour about it, and that maybe you think something about this situation that sort of holds you back, but it may not really be true. It may be that whatever is causing you, I think, to go slowly here or to go overly cautiously is a part of yourself that maybe lacks confidence for some reason. And, you know, you're a Leo, so I don't know where that's coming from. But maybe you've met your match in terms of a relationship or a situation you're really drawn with. The good news is I think you can really break out of that, but you have to understand why this seems like an illusion you bought into, Leo, or a game you bought into. Okay, so now we're moving on to Virgo. Virgo's Earth sign, and Virgo Sun, Moon, or Rising. Virgo, what is opportunity or challenge? And we had this before, but not this way. It's the Seven of Wands and it's upright. So the opportunity and challenge is for you to emotionally, with heart, with gusto, stand up for somebody, for your relationship, for something, for someone else's relationship, with strength. And with sort of that sense of, <laughs> we're not going back there. <laughs> we are not going back. <laughs> uh, Virgo, you're saying, like, that's it. You know, whoever has been trying to halt progress or disable progress or disable anything, it's not going to happen. That's your challenge is you're, you're meeting that, you know. So what is the action required? And the action required is the sun. And of course, right away I'm thinking like, that's information, that's knowledge, that's education. That this is about really illuminating a dark spot. This is about bringing knowledge to those who don't know or can't know for some reason. And in terms of the first card, Maybe this is what we really takes to make a difference that, you know, whatever this is about, once somebody understands, and I see, you know, the beauty of the sun there, I just sort of feel like this is about love too, in a way. Obviously. All right. So we're now into the second half of the zodiac, and that starts with Libra, which is an air sign. And Libra, Sun, Moon, or Rising. What is the opportunity or challenge? It's the reverse Five of Cups. Libra, you may have had some real emotional distress in recent time. Um, maybe you felt really like bad things would never be able to be rectified in one way or the other, that there was a certain finality that caused great sadness, whether it was the end of a relationship or worse, you know, somebody's passing that meant a lot to you. 
But this card is saying your challenge is to really go forward from that and to realize that your life is not over yet. And whatever caused you such great sa sadness is over, even if you choose you know, to remember and still process with it as you move along. But whatever that event or situation was, there was a finality to that. And you should take comfort in the sense that every day you move further from that towards something that maybe heals you. So what is the action required? Indeed, the action required is for Libra to maybe think of ways of being more assertive about yourself and or your emotional status. Maybe you are moving towards good progress in a way, working on yourself, using bravery and confidence to move forward, possibly in relationships, certainly in certain kinds of enterprise or partnerships in general. I think it's a good card, Libra, so I'm just going to leave it at that and say good luck. And now we'll move on to Scorpio. And Scorpio's water sign, sun, moon, or rising, Scorpio. Scorpio, what is the challenge or opportunity at this time? And it's the reverse king of wands. Scorpios, you may be floundering because you haven't really felt that you have felt really empowered about yourself in terms of attractiveness or magnetic qualities. You know, your usual Scorpio kind of stuff, you sort of feel like maybe you're lagging, maybe you're not in your game. You don't have control over it in certain ways. Is it possible that there is some sort of distress or disease about um, an accomplishment that you, you didn't have recently that may be something that didn't work out uh, or maybe because of the way a partnership of some sort ended? I'm not sure. But so the, the challenge would be trying to figure out how to really apply yourself with confidence or bravery to a situation maybe that doesn't inspire you with that. So what is the energy re required? And it's that five of cups again. And this time it's upright. And so I'm getting that message again a little bit there that maybe the Five of Cups is telling us there's a certain sense here that you may have ended certain relationships with people or with things. You know, this could be about you, you ending your own self-abuse, you know, through drugs or through other situations. But still, you haven't dealt with all of it yet, and that still may need to be dealt with. There still are some other things there that could be good that maybe are coming back. But there still is a picture in my mind looking at this and, and thinking about the whole situation where... You still have to process what's going on and um, and maybe take your time with it, Scorpio. All right, Sagittarius. Sun, moon, or rising, Sagittarius.
What is the opportunity or challenge? It's the reverse two of pentacles. You have a challenge right now of getting things in order in terms of your emotional house. This talks about the things that maybe bring you some amount of comfort because there's a situation that feels balanced overall that you don't feel anything is, you know, way too much this or that. But from that emotional point of view, maybe there are some challenges there. Maybe um, this could be talking about different things, but for a Sagittarian, maybe it, it may be talking about being indecisive uh, in terms of what you want or appreciate in terms of relationships. Maybe this could be the card of maybe somebody who's more casual about relationships, and maybe you might need to take more of a balanced view of that in terms of of relationships. Are you being truthful if you're casually dating or semi-polyamorous? I don't know if that covers all Sagittarians. I think there's other kind of situations with our home um, where maybe there are some balanced situations that we have to work on too. Okay. Energy required. And it's the reverse Ten of Cups. And I think it tells me a story. Now, Sagittarians, you may be dissatisfied with somebody in your environment. Maybe it's in your family. Maybe it's uh, in a closer situation. And I think you have to let them go. I think that if the first situation was maybe trying to help bring balance to that situation, if they're in the family, if they're in the actual home, or if they're in other areas that would affect you, you know, temple, home, school, workplace. This may be saying that you have to maybe limit how they pull your pull and push your buttons. You, there may not be all situations where you can avoid somebody who's a problem, Sagittarians, but maybe you have to figure out how you can actually limit somebody's corrosive or toxic influence. And I think this is more about family or or those kind of situations, although it could involve partners. Um, good luck with that. All right, now we are on Capricorn. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, or Rising, what is the opportunity or challenge? Ha! I love it. And you have the Ten of Cups, too. Only you have it upright. And so the opportunity or challenge may be not to take all aspects of your life for granted that you have an emotional, happy life that maybe is based on more than just your relationship or your or or a set of relationships with just children or parents or other situations. It's a total bag. It's a total look. And Capricorns maybe, you know, it's interesting because of course Capricorn is the sign of the father, and, and maybe this is saying Capricorns don't underestimate the power of the love you have of the situations you're involved in that you should learn to work with them and accept them and of course i am actually thinking of a capricorn or two that i hope gets that message i love capricorn people all right so what is the action required and it's the six of swords and i'll picture forms then and this is saying maybe capricorns you could be inclined to just sort of move somewhere, not move towards addressing problems. You know, the Six of Swords maybe indicates somebody who's choosing to not move ahead and maybe staying with situations that they haven't been dealing with well. 
And they're not going to get the help they need, even if they do have this supportive environment possibly going on there. Is there a relationship? Is there a codependency there? No, I don't think so. But I have a feeling that there's something that is keeping you not in this situation, but in a part or a similar one where you can't seem to realize that. Maybe that's what about is the challenge is getting there may mean making certain choices and trying to travel somewhere that you've been reluctant to do so far, Capricorn. All right, Aquarius now. Sun, Moon are rising. Let's take a look at Aquarius. And if you're wondering, once again, we're using the Modern Love Tarot by Ethany, art by Linda Morningstar. Is that right? Lucy Morningstar. Very nice deck. I like using it for the emotional exchanges. Okay, uh, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, or Rising. What is a challenge or opportunity? And it's our Ten of Cups again. Now, you all saw, saw me do that shuffle thing, so that's kind of weird. But Aquarians, you might have a similar situation to Capricorns. You are next to each other, so some astrological things. You can have the same Venus or... Mercury, because they're the slower moving planets, but your challenge or opportunity is realizing that you do have love. I sort of said this before, but you do have love. You may not realize that right now, but I think this is saying really be open to that idea that even if it isn't exactly the love you thought you were looking for, you are loved by people and you are appreciated, and there is a connection, there is a foundation, there is a place for you to be. So what is the oper the action required? And it's our friend, the, the Queen of Wands, but this time she's reversed. The action required is if you're not feeling the situation, don't don't be negative about that. Don't do things that challenge your good nature, Aquarius. The, the Queen of Wands reverse can be a kind of negative or biting character. They can be somebody that can be a little bit cruel, uh, judgmental, things like that. I think this card is saying the action required is to not be that kind of person, to try to bring out your better nature because maybe that's why you're not understanding you have this love because you've been too hard and being harsh with yourself or with other people. This could represent the idea too that you need to have some self-love, some self-care going on, Aquarius. And now finally, we are on Pisces. Pisces, a water sign. Sun, moon are rising. What's going on in your life? The emotional exchanges that are happening. What is the challenge or opportunity that is coming to the Pisces? What is it? And it's the reversed Eight of Wands. Something, yourself or someone or something, is trying to say, I don't think I can do this anymore. That maybe there's something that's really kind of saying, I'm done. I'm spent. I'm tired of trying to get to where I wanted to get, and I'm frustrated I'm not getting there. In a context of an emotional relationship, we are feeling like 
whatever it was we were pursuing or trying to pursue or trying to become more friendly with, it's eluding us or or it doesn't want us even. But this sort of seems like the target keeps shifting, <laughs> whatever that is. So what is the action required? Maybe we're, we want too much. I mean, I don't know that this is a specific for everyone who's a Pisces, but maybe this is saying that some Pisces, maybe it's saying really they don't know where to look. They don't have that energy, you know, to find love or relationship. What is the energy re required? And it's the Empress. And of course, the Empress to me can be two ways. It could be about saying, love yourself, love yourself fully, and then others will will love you or you will find the love you're looking for. But this could, could also be saying the Empress is really about still giving your love to the world. And maybe this is saying if there's a situation that does seem dodgy here, like maybe somebody doesn't realize that you love them because you're not really being explicit enough. And so maybe this is saying, tell the world you love them as well, whoever that is. All right, so that's the reading. And now I would like to do uh, a brief meditation from the Universal Love Oracle set by Tony Carmine Salerno, and I've done this before on the emotional exchanges. I just think uh, it's a nice way to end. Uh, it's more of an affirmation than, you know, shadow work. Shadow work isn't exactly what we need here necessarily. We need to just really understand how love works in our lives and how we work against love sometimes. Yeah, Learning how to accept ourselves, I suppose, is a part of shadow work. I won't deny that. Um, but we're going to keep it into that, that look more about universal love. So what is our card then? And our card is soulmate. So I'd like everybody to relax for a moment. Listen to my voice. Close your eyes. Love is the universal energy that fills creation. This energy is alive and intelligent. Love has heard your call. You will soon connect with your soulmate. Focus your attention on love. Spend some time each day imagining yourself together and with your soulmate. See the future filled with happiness and love. If you are already with your soulmate, the message here is to always value and be grateful for your relationship. Relationships, like everything else, need constant nurturing, care, and attention. And your relationship will continue to grow and strengthen, provided it is nurtured. So that's what I have, everybody. And, you know, I think that might resonate more with some of the signs than others. You know, I, I'm not thinking of any particular part, but uh, maybe the, the last one, Pisces even. But So I hope, you know, you got something nice out of that and um, and you feel that. Because what the world needs now is love, like the old song says. So I'm Oberon, and I thank you for coming to the Emotional Exchanges. Thank you very much. And we will be back tomorrow, Banshee and I, with the happy hour from 10 to 11 approximately. And it's a one-card reading for positivity, divine message, whatever you want to look at that, for each person in the chat room. So come and enjoy at this YouTube channel, Sunday Banshee's Material Matters is at 10 a.m. And that's uh, pretty much like the uh, finance business version of this show. And she'll do a reading for each sign of the zodiac as well. Collective reading at the beginning.
Later on, we're having our special uh, live stream from 2 to 4. And part of our Halloween giveaway is we are giving away uh, any remaining decks. We've been trying to give away two per show. So we're going to give away two more, we hope, and or... Well, not and, but or a reading. Uh, we're not able to ship our tarots, our decks uh, across Canada, or the U.S. So we can give a reading to people uh, who win the spin of the wheel. That's what we're doing. We just have a spin of the wheel. If you get the right selection, you're going to win your choice of decks. First come, first serve. Uh, we have a number of decks. I'm going to roll the tape after this. So see you later. Good luck. And happy Halloween.